Hi and welcome to the 16th in these weekly series of devotionals on the B.U.T.s of the Bible, the great verses that have but in them. And for this week we turn to 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 27. There it reads, But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Abraham Lincoln, or it was possibly Mark Twain, were a little bit unsure, said this. Better to be thought a fool than to open one's mouth and remove all doubt. Certainly the sentiment of that can be found in Proverbs 17 and verse 28. And perhaps it's more relevant to us today in this age of social media and this time of Covid than it ever has been. Because some of us, of course, have put our name and our voice online. And we're aware that if we're deemed not to have said the right thing in the right way, that it can very easily get picked up and we can be shamed by others online. No one wants to be seen as being a fool. Although I did know of one couple on their wedding who chose the old hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Unfortunately, the second line of that hymn reads, Forgive our foolish ways. Probably not the hymn that you want to be singing just after you've exchanged your wedding vows. And Paul, in this letter to one of the early churches, wants to remind the believers that few of them were well-educated or powerful or came from privileged backgrounds. But God chose them to be his followers. They had gained much more than the world was able to offer them. And its likes of them because of what they'd gained in Christ. Jesus came to show us that things that the world may say are foolish, like dying for your enemies or weakness, like serving others ahead of yourselves are in fact the radical way of living God's way. That's why I know that as a preacher for these last 30 years, that as long as I stick, as the Bible tells me to, to preaching Christ crucified, some will see that as foolish, others as shameful. But for some, they will understand that Christ's death and resurrection for us is the powerful message of transforming salvation. So surely that's worth telling others about, even if some of them won't particularly like it. When I was a rugby chaplain, I used to go and train with the players at the club once a week. The club was semi-professional. And one season we had a full-time professional come down to play for us. He was coming to the end of his career, just wanting to go into coaching. And so came down and I think really fancied himself as being the star in the team. Now all the players around me were all better than I was, fitter than I was, stronger than I was. And so often he could make me look very foolish in training. But one of the things I did try and do was just to keep going all the time. Show a willingness to be involved. So one of the things I often used to do was try and charge down the kick as the kicker was getting it away. I must have done it hundreds of times over many seasons and never got anywhere near any of them. They could sidestep me, kick it away before I got there or pass around me, and I would just end up looking foolish, running the thin air. But this particular occasion, with this particular player, he seemed to just hang on to the ball forever. And I got closer and closer to him. When eventually he tried to kick it away, I charged it down. Now, professional sport can be merciless in its mickey-taking of those who make mistakes. And the boys gave this player so much stick that as we came off to training at the end I tried to apologise to him for embarrassing him but I don't think he was in the mood 
to accept my apology. Nobody likes to be made a fool. Nobody likes to think that they need any help. But we recognise that in Jesus, we all are in need of a saviour. The missionary martyr of the 1950s, Jim Elliot, wrote in his journal shortly before he was killed for his faith. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. I want to live like that. I want to live with eternity in mind. Maybe for some that will be seen as foolish and to others as a weakness. But I know that God has chosen me to be part of his team. And that's all I need to know to live for him. I wonder whether you think and believe that for you. What would you give up to serve Jesus this week? God bless you as you consider this verse. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong.